have to remember. Back up! If you don't wake up, you're gonna die. Gerald's Game is a 2017 Netflix original horror film adapted from a Stephen King novel of the same name and is directed by Mike Flanagan. He also wrote the film with Jeff Howard and edited the film as well. I had never seen this movie before watching it for this series. Uh, I remember watching this in 2017 and being like, okay, this is it. I was terrified the first time I saw this movie, like scarred. I think this is where Mike Flanagan you know, finally hit with me. I think this is what put him on the map. My opinion during the movie got drastically changed as the movie went on. I, I Almost the opposite kind of of how I felt watching Hush. Like, in the beginning, I was along for the ride or whatever, but like I was never really bought in or like hooked in. And then as the movie went on, it was like a slow climb as the more and more I was interested. And I feel like that's so rare for movies. Like, it's very hard for a movie to do that. Um, and this one did that successfully, so I have to commend it for that. Couple having trouble in their marriage, going on vacation, get kind of kinky. Handcuffs uh, her to the bed, heart attack, dies. Boom. That's it. And I was really surprised because I, I do remember like seeing the trailer when it was first coming out and I knew the basic premise of the movie. Uh, so that's how I thought it was going to go as far as like, oh, they're just like trying to be kinky having sex. But like, it, no, it gets dark really quick. At the beginning of the movie, uh, their relationship right off the bat, you can tell there's like an uncomfortableness between them. Like they are not this happy married couple. Is this, is this really what it takes these days? Well, fuck, Jess, I... The whole movie is very, very dark. And I should have known from Mike Flanagan, it has some trauma. It has some, you know, issues yes. getting over of that trauma. Yes, a lot of trauma. Holy shit. The terrifying image of actors just staring into the camera. So scary. I don't know what it is, but it makes me feel so uncomfortable sometimes. Especially Bruce, man. He, him and this is just, he just nails it. Like, he's been like whatever guy and everything, but like... The way he acts and their relationship just feels so real in this. Five hours you've wasted screaming for neighbors that are half a mile away if they're mm -hmm. even here yeah. yet. It's so believable because uh, Carla's makeup when she's like stuck in the thing, she looks so dehydrated and like the mirage of herself looks perfectly beautiful makeup, but very convincing stuff. And Hush where it's like, where she sees a fake scenario of herself like getting out of there and it came like so late in the movie. With this, the mirages are set up pretty early, where it's like the fake getting out of the handcuffs, I forgave it. Like, I could tell this movie was a book. You know what I mean? It's one, <laughs> it's one of those, you know what I mean? Where it's like, a lot of times with adaptations, it's hard to change the language because certain language works in books and there's language that works in movies and they don't always work in one another. And I don't know if this is just me, but like, I can tell a lot of the times when there's an adaptation of like, I could be reading this off the page of the book. You know what I mean? Like, I could tell this is book language. Like, the very descriptive, like, metaphorical, like, way that they speak. And it's like, okay, no one talks like this in real life. You married an older man. Your father was a lawyer. Gerald was a lawyer. Your father minimized you. Objectified you. Let's not forget my burgeoning drinking problem. I think it's just a wonderful human story and very tragic. It on the surface level, it's like, oh, she's handcuffed to a bed. How she's, how she's going to get out? And then, like, so many horrible things are revealed through flashbacks and dialogue. And it's, it's, uh, it's one of those that, you know, sits with you for a bit. And I've, I watched it the first time. I haven't rewatched it since, probably because of how heavy it is. And also some scary elements and scary images. <sighs> yeah, I highly recommend it. This is the movie that turned me on to Mike Flanagan. Should we go into the flashback? Uh, well, no, I feel like we have to start with the ending. Like, start with the ending. Well, like, what the hell? So, like, this is me watching the movie. I'm, like, as I described, steadily getting more and more interested to where by the climax, when she does escape, I was like, oh, wow, this is really good. Like, I'm really into this. And then it starts to do the whole epilogue, and I'm thinking they're just wrapping up the story. And then they're all of a sudden, like, no, that creepy guy was real. And I'm like, I verbally out loud went, I'm sorry? I only noticed when he finally made the front page. He'd graduated, it seemed, from the dead. <laughs> like, I'm like, wait, what? And I thought they were just going to leave it at the hint of when she's like, about her wedding ring. And she's like, they searched the apartment, they never found my wedding ring. I thought they were just going to leave it there as like a little, like, oh, did death take the wedding ring? Like, you know, like an actual representation of, a de of death? Uh -huh. No, it's just a, a ban. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that whole thing was real. Because, yeah, the whole thing's really good with, uh, you know, gaslighting and like, make, is she actually seeing this? Because it does it pretty well where like, uh, Bruce Green with like fake comes uh, comes alive. Oh, what the hell? And 
I thought it was just a neat little twist where it's like, oh no, that thing was real, but you actually needed to get out of there. The metaphor for me worked so well of him being this visualization of death mm -hmm. and then her giving the wedding ring to be able to move on, you know? Yeah. And then it's just a real guy. Like, I, it was just so shocked by it. Maybe because it works for the ending, she's able to like kind of like not forgive, but like look it in the face that she was never able to do with her dad or her hus mm -hmm. husband to be like, you know, touch him and be like, okay, you know, and move on from it. And don't get me wrong, I like it. I like that it took that turn because I just did not expect it at all. And it was crazy. And it did make me want to instantly rewatch, which I haven't. Uh, and I don't know if I will, but it did make me feel that in the moment of one of those, you know, credits hit. And you're like, oh, I want to watch this again now. Yeah. Um, but instead, I just spent an hour on Reddit looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the other big thing to talk about, spoiler-wise, is that the whole story with the father, Henry Thomas. When you were a little girl, you used to sit on my lap. You'd point up at the stars and you'd ask me how far away each one was. Possibly the best gaslighting scene I've ever seen happens. I mean, if it's ever going to come out, then it's better for both of us that it happened now. So uncomfortable. And the symbolism that the eclipse is going on, and then she says she has this recurring dream where she's like stuck in a well, you know, looking up and it's like, it's the eclipse. Yeah, I uh, really, really liked this uh, story in the movie, probably my favorite part. And Henry Thomas just does such a great job playing this creepy dad. Oh, yeah. He's great. Great actor. One of the most manipulating scenes I've ever seen. So hard to watch, dude. Like, painful to watch. It's like, oh, my God. This is like, master class manipulation where it's, like, so uncomfortable. You got to give credit to the actress playing young Jesse in that, the whole movie, but in that scene in particular with, with the subtle crying and, and just the overall just being destroyed by this event. Uh, and being terrified of her mother because of the one scene they set up. She just picks fights with her brother. She rolls her eyes at me incessantly. <laughs> She's 12. Yeah, smiles and sweetness for daddy. You know it's good writing when there only needs to be one scene. Like, there's one scene with Kate Siegel as her mother where she's, like, mad at the daughter, and you instantly know what that relationship is. Like, you instantly get it. Something's off, yeah. Something's wrong there, yeah. And, and then later on, when she doesn't want to tell the mom, you you buy it. Like, you understand why, because you saw that earlier scene. Do you want to talk about the actual getting out of the handcuffs? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. That... <laughs> Oh, it's just hand and mutilation. I don't, I don't, I don't, like, why? Why? It's like, it's like, ugh, so terrible. I, I had to look away. I'll be honest. Like, I, oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. I, I couldn't do it. I, and then, like, I look back and I just see the hand being torn apart. I'm like, nope, sorry. I can't, I can't do it. Yeah. I love this movie. Go see it, please. Uh, still on Netflix. Yeah, it's Thank still God. on there. <laughs> yeah. If you notice, we have Haunting of Hill House and Dr. Sleep up here because uh, Gerald's game is not on physical release. Yeah. As far as we know, so. Yeah, interesting. Or Hush. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really random. I mean, Netflix still to this day does, like, not release anything. It's just random. Like, the fact that they made Hill House on Blu-ray, I was like, oh, I was surprised. Oh, they know? did? Oh, wow. Yeah, it's right there. Oh, my fucking <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs>